Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, I'm now going to answer question number four from the January 2022, sorry, 2022 Pure Mathematics P2 International A-Level Edexcel exam. And this question here is about logarithms and solving log equations. So we want to solve this log equation using the laws of logarithms. So first of all, um, to solve a question like this, there are a few different methods that can be used. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring all the log terms on one side of the equation. So I have log to the base 3 of 32 minus 12x minus 2 times log to the base 3 of 1 minus x equals 2. So I subtracted this term from both sides. So I leave, I end up with on my left side just log terms. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine um, if they are both to the same base, and they are. And also, I want to try to get rid of any factors like this 2 here in front of the log. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the laws called the power, called the power law, where I'm going to take something that looks like this, and I'm going to rewrite it as log to the base b of c to the power of a. That's called the power law. Okay, that's one of the three main laws of logarithms which help us to, uh, you know, manipulate and rearrange and rewrite logarithms so that we can then do things like what we're doing now, solve the equation. So I'm going to rewrite this with the two up here as a power. Okay, now the reason behind this, you might find in some of the other videos I've done, how, how does this power law work? We can go through that in another time. But that's a law that we should know. So that 2 is going to be written in front of, on top of this bracket here. So we have log to the base 3 of 32 minus 12x minus log to the base 3 of 1 minus x to the power of 2. And that's equal to 3. Now, once I've got them written in this formula, they're the same base. The logs are to the same base. There's no multiples in front of them. I can combine these two together using another law of logarithms. And the other law of logarithms is, in this case, the division law, where if I have log to the base b of a minus log to the base b of c, I can write that as log to that same base of a divided by c. That's another law of logarithms. There's also another one, which, which is called the addition law, where you can use log to the base b of a plus log to the base b of c. You'd have log to the base b of a times c. But if it's minus here, it's a divided by c. Kind of linked to the laws of indices in a way. Division and subtraction are linked in that way. So I can rewrite this as log to the base 3 of, I'll have 32 minus 12x divided by 1 minus x all squared, and that's equal to 3. Now, what I can do after this is I can rewrite this now and in index form. So converting from log form to index form. So again, we know that log to the base a, b equals c can be rewritten. This is the power, this is the, the, the base, a is the base, c is the power, and b is the answer, you can say. That's how you rewrite things in index form from log form. So that's what I'm going to do to this. I'm going to rewrite this in index form. So I know that this is the base, this is the power, and this is the result. So 32 minus 12x over 1 minus x squared. I have now written this, so there's no logarithms. I've written it in index form, and this is an equation now which I need to solve for x, and then make sure that the values I get satisfy the equation in the beginning. So first of all, this is going to be 27, 3 cubed, times 1 minus x squared, just cross multiplying to get rid of the fraction, multiply both sides by 1 minus x squared. That's equal to 32 minus 12x. So I've got rid of the fraction. Now I can expand that bracket. So I have 27 times 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So you expand that bracket. Equals 32 minus 12x. Okay, don't make the mistake of saying this is 1 plus x squared or 1 minus x squared. You have the middle term. Remember, it's 1 minus x multiplied by 1 minus x. 1 minus x squared, minus, sorry, minus x, minus another x, and plus x squared. 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Well, I use the, the, um, the pattern of expanding brackets. You square the first term, 
you multiply them together, that gives you minus x, then double it for the middle term, it's minus 2x, and then you square the last term, and when you square negative number, it becomes positive. All right, now I can expand that bracket, so I have 27 minus, that's 54x plus 27x squared equals 32 minus 12x. Now I can see I have a quadratic equation, and um, I'm going to make it equal 0, so that I have... I can use a zero product property to try to solve it. So I've got my 27x squared. I have minus 54x and plus 12x, which is going to be minus 42x. Then I've got 27 minus 32, which is minus 5, equals zero. So I have to solve this equation. This is a quadratic equation. Now, um, what we can't do is just put this in our calculator and use the function for um, you know, solving equations, that will lose marks. And it's mentioned very clearly in the mark scheme, in the last question especially. The last question in this paper, which was question number... Actually, it's not in this paper, it's in the P1 paper, actually. But it's mentioned very clearly okay, in the mark schemes, all right, that if you just write down the answer without showing either that you have completed the square or that you have tried to factorize, Okay, or that you have used the quadratic formula. If you don't show any of those three methods and you just write down the answer, you will definitely lose marks. Okay, you'll definitely lose marks. So I'm going to first try to factorize this, although probably in the exam, if I see a question like this, I might just go straight for the formula if I am um, short of time because the numbers don't seem so friendly for factorizing. But it is, you know, probably quite possible, especially as we see that one of the numbers here is a 5, and I'll explain what I mean now. So let me just first show you how to do it by fact factorizing, and then we'll go to the formula afterwards, just to show you how that works. So to factorize, this is how I like to factorize. 27x squared, the, the x squared term in the top left, and the number term in the bottom right. When I multiply them together, I'm going to get 135 minus 135, x squared. So I know two numbers multiplied to give me negative 135x squared. So I know what one of them must be a positive value, one of them must be a negative value because you have a negative product. These two must multiply to give me that same product. And the sum of those numbers has to be negative 42x. So from the numbers, the bigger number must go here. And when you, multi when you add the numbers together, you end up with negative 42. All right, so now, I know for sure, because when I multiply the numbers, I get um, 135, which ends as a, and a 5. The numbers should have a 5 in them, because the way to get 5 when you multiply numbers together is to have a number ending in 5. So I'm pretty sure that one of the numbers will end in 5. So I'm going to try out some things to try and figure this out. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll say, okay, 135 divided by 5. Let's try 5 first. 27, 27 and 5 won't give me 42. So let me change it to 15. 9, 9 and 15 doesn't give me 42 in any way if I subtract them. No. So let me try 25. I don't think it even goes into 25. Exact number of times. Nope. 35 definitely doesn't go into 35. Okay, let me try 45. three times and 45 and 3 is a combination that's going to give me 42 so it's going to be minus 45 and plus 3 that's going to give me negative 42 when I add them and negative 135 x squared when I multiply them so um, how did I find that okay I basically realized that the one of the numbers must end in 5 so I tried 5 10 15 20 25 35 45 and I ended up with 45 okay so it's 45 times 3 those numbers are the right combination. Now I can factorize this, so I can see from these two terms, this is 3x and this is 45x, by the way. That must be the x terms, because they add to give me money for 2x. So, for example, these two terms, the common factor is going to be 3x. 3x times 9x gives me 27x squared. 9x times minus 5 gives me 45x. And 3x times plus 1 gives me 3x. So I end up with my factors 9x plus 1 multiplied by 3x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, And from there I can continue to solve the equation. That means 9x plus 1 equals 0 
or 3x minus 5 equals 0. So x equals minus 1 over 9 and x equals 5 over 3. All right now, I haven't finished the question because we always with logarithms, we must check to see if any of the answers causes any of these to be undefined. And I'll explain that in a minute. But before continuing, I'll just explain to you also a um, few things. If you had used the calculator button or calculator function of solving equations, you would have got these answers directly. All right. And if you wrote those answers down, you would lose marks. Now, some students try to be clever and they say, oh, I'll write it as x plus 1 over 9 in one bracket and x minus 5 over 3 in the other bracket. Okay, and if you, if you do that, again, you're going to lose marks, okay, because they know what you did with your calculator, right? So, this is mentioned actually in the mark scheme of the P1 exam, when there's a similar type of question of factorizing, okay, it's mentioned there very clearly that this will gain no marks, okay? So, you have to be careful about just trying to fiddle your answers, okay? So, you can factorize. If you, if you didn't think of this, if you couldn't get the factors, you tried for a little while, then you just go to the formula, which I'll show you over here. Now, when you do the formula, you have to write down, I mean, if you write down the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, if you write that down, okay, you will lose, I mean, you, will, you, you won't gain any marks unless you put everything in the right place. So you're going to put minus minus 42 that's your b and plus or minus the square root of minus 42 squared minus 4 times a which is 27 times c which is minus 5 all over 2 times 27 okay you have to have these this written down at least and then when you write your answers down that's fine okay so if you put this in your cap if you write this step down where you have you're showing everything in the right place, that's where you get the method mark. If you just write the formula down without putting things in the right place, you won't get the marks for it. Okay, so you must show that you put everything in the right place so that you know how to use the formula. Don't just write the formula down and then put the values in your calculator. Show at least these in the right place and then you can use your calculator to, to find the value. So you've got minus minus 42, which is just 42, plus the square root of minus 42 squared which is like the same as 42 squared minus 4 times a which is 27 times c which is negative 5 divided by 2 times 27 and that gives you 5 over 3 which is one of our solutions that we got and then you're gonna go change this to a negative it's plus or minus so this is now i'll choose the minus one and you see we get minus 1 over 9, which is one of the other solutions you get. So we end up with minus 1 over 9 and 5 over 3, of course, exactly the same solutions. So this is using the formula. That's an alternative method we could use. And we could also complete the square, which I won't go into in this part. But yeah, we could also complete the square if we wanted to. But one of those three methods must be shown. You can't just put the numbers in your calculator and get the answers. All right, so that's part uh, well, we haven't finished yet because now we have to make sure that our values satisfy the equation given. So we have to make sure that our values actually satisfy this equation. All right, because uh, sometimes you get values which cause it to be undefined. Now, if any value, if any value causes the logarithm to have something that's equal to uh, any number which is zero or less than uh, zero, negative, then you know, basically, it's going to be undefined. So both of these values inside the bracket have to be greater than zero. So when you put x equals minus 1, 9 in here, you'll have log to the base 3 of 32 minus 12 times minus 1 over 9. Okay, um, this is equal to 2 times log to the base 3 of 1 minus minus 1 over 9 plus 3, well, that's going to give you a positive value. That's going to be a positive value. That's fine. Okay, and then we try when x equals um, 5 over 3, you have 32 minus 12 times 5 over 3 equals 2 times log to the base 3 of 1 minus 5 over 3 plus 3. Now, this is a problem 
here log to the base 3 of 1 minus 5 over 3 is undefined because you have a negative value this is this is because it's log to the base 3 of minus 2 thirds this gives you log to the base 3 of negative 2 thirds so this is undefined therefore the only solution is x equals negative 1 over 9 okay when this is when x equals negative 1 over 9 this is when x equals 5 over 3 so x equals 5 over 3 is not one of our solutions so this is the only solution you have to make it clear after solving the quadratic equation that we're only choosing x equals minus 1 over 9 because this causes the equations to be defined whereas 5 over 3 causes one part here to become negative which means it causes it to be undefined so it's a very important point you lose marks if you don't if you don't eliminate the equation the the solution x equals 5 over 3 because that solution makes this undefined okay that's very very important right, so there's the answer to this question i went on a bit for this question just to explain a few basic laws of logarithms and also to give you some methods of factorizing uh, which won't cause you to lose marks if you just use the calculator function all right so there we have it um thank you for watching other questions from this paper of January 2022 P2 can be found in the link over here. Other questions from logarithms from P2 can be found in this link over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.